I was uh, called out in my last video for poor quality video, very shaky, um, and you're absolutely right. I've been filming most of my things to date on the iPhone, and I'm going to try and do a better job in this video because I find it a little bit ironic because if you've been keeping along with my videos over the past couple of months, you might think that all I've been doing is working on building a CNC lathe. That certainly feels like what I've been working on for a while. Um, but the ultimate project that I'm working on is building camera lenses, um, or more importantly, or more uh, specifically, uh, camera lens housings, the barrels, uh, that hold the optic elements and keep them in alignment and adjust focus for use on cameras. So given that I'm doing a camera project, I should be using a good camera, um, and I'm going to try and do a better job of videoing for you today. So today I want to tell you a little bit about the project that I've been working on, um, tell you a little bit more about uh, what's going on here uh, with this barrel assembly, then show you what final pieces I need to do to get this thing done, because I'm pretty close to completion. In my last video I made um, the helical screw on this piece here, which was the last sort of complicated machining step. I've got to do a few more other steps and then I think I can call this prototype piece done. Um, so let's zoom in, take a look at this piece, I'll walk you through what's going on here and show you what I need to do today to uh, complete this project. So here we have the barrel assembly. Uh, before I go through what all these pieces do, I'm going to take a minor detour into optical systems engineering. Um, if people want to learn more about that, uh, please let me know, write a comment, say something on Reddit, and I can spend a little bit more time in future videos talking about that. Um, and I can share some of my very limited wisdom with you. Uh, but basically what we have here is the most basic type um, of uh, uh, construction that lets you focus a fixed focal length lens. So what do I mean by that? Um, imagine a lens, uh, go back to sort of high school and then and some of the physics you may have studied. Um, if you have a lens and you have an object at infinity, so it's infinitely far away, imagine a point on that object at infinity, just a single point that's radiating light. Those light beams will come out sort of in a cone, but as you're infinitely far away, those lines will basically be parallel coming into the camera lens. Parallel rays coming into a camera lens, let's say it's a 50 millimeter um, focal length lens, will take those parallel rays and focus them down to a point that's 50 millimeters or five centimeters behind the, 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 the plane of the lens. Um, not every object that you'll be taking photos of will be infinitely far away. In fact, most of the objects will be a little bit closer than that. Things that are far and far away, like, you know, um, a football field length away, you can consider that basically infinity for, for most lens purposes. Um, but if you're taking a photo of a person who's a few feet away, you need to focus that lens. And the way that you focus that lens is you bring the lens in or out with respect to where the focal plane is, or sorry, the, the image sensor is, to compensate for the fact that the rays are not entering the lens in parallel. That's basically the, the, the rough idea of how you focus. So if you imagine, let me take this guy apart here. If you imagine that there's a lens in this inner barrel here, and you want to have an object that's in infinity, you'll have a lens like that. If you have an object that's closer than infinity, you want to be able to move the lens back and forth to compensate for how far away that object is. So I've made previous other lenses, um, I've got piles of parts around somewhere, and the easiest way to do that is you have one inside barrel, sorry, an inside barrel, and outside barrel, and you just slide them back and forth. Um, that works okay, uh, but it's kind of janky, it doesn't feel good in your hand. Um, what you really want to be able to do is rotate an element and have that rotation translate to a translation. So that's what I've got set up here. So I've got four pieces of metal, um, or five pieces if you include the F-mount adapter here, or F-mount mounting plate here. Let's walk through them. So this is the main part of the body. It contains this main tube here, and I've got a aluminium tube just on the outside of that that's been press fit on. That basically allows me to have some mounting holes here. I don't know if you can see them on the camera. Three little mounting holes that I need to tap. They correspond to the holes here, and that way I can attach an F mount or a Nikon mount to the back of this guy. Uh, it also serves another purpose, which is I want to use this um, sort of platform here, or this, this little um, uh, assembly here as a platform for other lenses. So I want to be able to switch this plate out, or this tube out with other lengths, uh, to, to, to deal with other, length, uh, other focal length lenses, and uh, this ring allows me to do that. 
A little side note, I parted uh, that piece of tube off some stock last night using my CNC lathe setup and boy do I not have enough torque. Um, you can see here the, the, the bit that I parted off. I don't have enough torque on a stepper motor. I end up just manually turning the headstock as I fed the parting tool through to cut that guy off. So there's definitely a downside for using a stepper motor rather than um, the actual motor for, for the lathe. Anyway, um, so this is the back piece here. Um, you'll see there are three holes here that take number zero machine screws. They correspond to a groove that's milled into this piece here. Um, I've bored out a section here that allows me to place this piece in here that rotates freely and those holes correspond to that groove which allows me to lock this in place so it doesn't fall out but it still can rotate. Then I have three other holes on this focusing ring and those correspond to the three starts of the one thread per inch thread on here. What that means is that when this guy is in here, I, ah, these guys are, are very finely matched. They need to be put in parallel. Um, when those, ah, I need to take some more off the outside of that. When um, that registers in the slot there and you rotate this, the lens will move, the lens assembly will move backwards and forwards. So I need to do a few more operations to get this thing done. One, as you can see, the fit is a little too close. I need to take some more off the outside, thin that inside brass piece down a little bit um, to get it to fit nicely in those guys. The second thing I need to do is mill some just straight grooves along here. That's relatively easy to do. The reason why I need to do that is I need to keep this tube, even though it's gonna move backwards and forwards, I don't want it to rotate in relation to this piece. I want all the rotation to come from this guy and result in a translation of this guy. So mill some grooves along here, drill some holes here to register into those grooves and that will hold that into there. Now the last thing that I need to do is you'll see that these guys are roughly the same height. I need to take some height off the bottom of this. I need to take uh, about you know, the half an inch um, off the bottom here because I want that screw hole there to correspond to the top of the thread there. That will be the backwards most position. Then as I thread it forward, that then will be the frontward most position. So I get an inch of movement there. Right now I can't move it all the way back because it'll interfere with the F mount assembly at the back. So I need to chop some length off there. I knew that was going to happen. I just kept this bit of length around so I could mount it in the jaws and not worry about marking it up. So I'm going to take some surface off, mill some grooves, drill some holes, chop some stuff off, um, and hopefully I'll be able to do all of that tonight and call this guy done. Of course, I need to mount this piece on as well. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty close to being done with this project and I'm pretty excited. So let's take things over to the lathe. 2,000 years later. I messed up. Um, I got the die cam on and then I realized that I hadn't um, faced this surface. So my scribe line is wibbly wobbly because my edge of my surface was wibbly wobbly. So I thought, okay, quick and easy, I'll face that up. And I drove the end mill into the piece um, because I wasn't paying attention. Something weird happened, my serial console stopped responding. Um, and I don't know what happened. Anyway, I'm gonna put it down to Pebcac. Um, A few inches later. All right, so you can see there that either this guy is out of round or more than likely um, I was not indicated well. Um, I probably could have overstepped, overlapped these guys a little bit more um, to get a better finish. Just for the sake of um, niceness, I'm going to move this guy back to the start by just backing the mill under power 
back one inch. I'm going to go in a little bit further. Let's find out where the low, sp that's a low, sp a high spot, a low spot. Let's see how far off that was. A few moments later. So there's this Tom Lipton video um, where he has this great piece of advice. Actually, I think it's every Tom Lipton video that has a great piece of advice. And he talks about how old timers have all these advantages over new guys when it comes to machining. And one of the advantages that old guys have is they have patience. Uh, new people, in, in this video I was watching recently, he says that new people um, are so eager to take their work off the machine that they don't think about planning, they pull the piece off and they've realised they've made a mistake and they don't have a chance to fix it because they've pulled it off the machine. I am definitely a new guy. I set out last night with a plan of, of finishing this off. Um, it's now the next night and I've got it done. Done in the sense that it's together and I can do my intended motion. I can rotate and move that thing in and out. I've got the F-mount guy mounted. But um, I've learnt a lot. And I think the biggest thing that I've learnt is patience. Um, I made a bunch of mistakes along the way. Um, probably the, the, the biggest mistake was not coming up with a full written down plan before I made this. Um, I was sort of just winging it along the way. And when I made mistakes, I'd be like, ah, I can sort of deal with that in post, um, so to speak. For example, um, the first mistake that I made in making this was when I drilled these three holes. The way I got those holes was just wrapping a piece of tape around the outside and dividing it by three and putting the tape back on and marking the three holes. That was not an accurate way uh, of getting my three holes. Um, that piece of inaccuracy coupled with the fact that when I cut the helical screw, um, one of the screws was off, has meant that it's been really hard to put this guy together in a way um, that the motion is smooth. It works, kind of, um, but it's not perfect. But I'm going to call that done. Um, I've got the first test piece measured, uh, not measured, made. Uh, I've learnt a lot. I've learnt a lot about how to actually operate the machinery that I have. I've learnt a lot about um, the value of planning and doing some calculations. And hopefully I've learnt a thing or two about patience because I'm going to make this guy again. I'm going to draw out a plan properly beforehand and um, I'll take it for a second run. But I'm off for vacation for a couple of weeks so I'm going to mount this guy up to a camera lens. I'm going to take some photos with it. I'm going to have some fun and then I'm going to come back to the shop and build another one and um, keep on learning and keep on getting better at what I'm doing because this was a lot of fun. I've got this piece made but um, there's a long way to go before I'm happy with the work that I've done. Um, but I'm going to call this piece done and move on to other things. Thanks a lot. I guess I'd be remiss not to include a video with a lens. There is a blurry cat. This lens doesn't have a lot of uh, contrast by intention. Um, an optical system should have a fairly black interior to reduce the internal reflections. I, on the other hand, have polished the interior of the brass tube because I like the low contrast look. I like the brass cast that it makes on the um, image. You can see the spherical aberration on the edges there. but. It's working. This has been fun. Yeah.